everyone i am here on um wednesday on our snow day i'm sitting here all the snow is gone but the school is closed which is cool uh so i can do this uh we stopped in the previous segment which was four so therefore this is five in the environment chapter uh segment five and uh i'm gonna have to start talking about the marine environments these are the sedimentary environments in the ocean these are the areas which is always under water. Um, the first part is the continental shelf, which is right here. This is basically belongs to the continent, except this area is uh, covered with water. Usually it's very, very shallow water. Then you have the shelf break right here, which is basically the place where the organic or coral reefs are located. The next one is the continental slope and the continental rise. And then the last one we have to talk about is the bishop plane. This is the deep water, basically. Uh, so these are the things we have to talk about. And we're going to start with the first one, which is going to be the continental shelf. So the continental shelf is basically... Um, continental On the continental shelf, there is a lot of... Uh, sediment but it's strongly controlled by the tides waves and currents and uh, as the water becomes deeper the influence of the continent becoming less and less important uh, on this slide you can see this here this area right before the continental uh, the shelf break and the slope and the rise and the visual plane right here this here is the continental shelf so that's the area right here um, in this area because it's usually relatively high energy area because you've got all the waves and tides going in and out usually you don't get the silt and the clay sediment don't get to settle down because it just cannot happen in uh, high energy water so it has to be quiet and deeper water so most of the time the clay and silt will settle down almost toward the shelf edge or it even sometimes goes down into the deeper water so that's the continental shelf if you look at the worldwide distribution of the continental shelf actually you can see that the composition strongly depend on the climate uh, and the latitude of course uh, if you are in the tropical area the continental shelf sediment is going to be dominated by carbonate as we have been learning it uh, in the rock fossils and, and time. Remember, I have told you carbonates are strictly in the tropical area. So if the continental shelf is in the tropics, you're going to have mostly uh, carbonates. If it's in the mid-latitude, you're going to have mostly quartz in that area. And if you're in the in Antarctica, you're going to have glacial till and ice rafted sediments mostly in these uh, continental shelf areas. So now we're going to see what's uh, at the shelf edge. If we are in the in the tropical area, on the shelf edge, you got the coral reef. The, the coral reefs are very wave resistant, so they love high energy environments. They have to leave attached, so they will make these mound shaped uh, features. And they mostly are uh, corals and algae. The corals actually live together with algae with symbiosis. They couldn't live without each other. And the algae is photosynthesizing. So for a fact, we always know that the corals are in the photic zone. Remember, that is the uppermost part of the ocean where the light can penetrate, so photic zone. And uh, they are always in the tropics. So anytime you find fossils, you know you are in the tropics, you're in the photic zone, and you know that these guys are uh, leave attached, so they are benthos. And they always live together with the, with the algae, so they, they have to be able to photosynthesize. They cannot leave if even if the water is dirty when i say dirty that means that it has silt in it so it actually shuts down the sunlight the corals die out so 
that's about the coral reefs of course you're gonna get more uh this is just a picture of the coral reefs you know they are the most i hope some of you have seen it and went snorkeling somewhere in the caribbean because it's an amazing experience i had the chance to actually snorkel in belize uh, i snorkeled in jamaica which is pretty sad because um in jamaica people don't clean up their waters the dirty water with the chlorine goes into the ocean which basically kills all the corals so i didn't see any living corals in jamaica however in the bahamas and in belize beautiful beautiful uh coral reefs the florida coral reefs are also not very uh the diversity is not very high because the temperature is changing very often the the silt content content is high so it's just not a, a very perfect environment for reefs uh, around the florida area you know the reefs only go grow from key largo down toward key west we have three different kind of coral reef uh the first one is the the fringing reef Th that's the fringing one when you have a fringing reef that means the reef is all around the continent like hawaii is a typical fringing reef then you got the barrier reef when you have a barrier reef you have the land remember the coral is always attached so it usually is uh in the ocean where it can still get to the to the floor uh when we have barrier reef they actually are farther away right at the shelf edge uh so there is a lagoon between the land and the coral reef and the third one is the atoll atoll I don't know how would you pronounce it at all when you have an atoll that means you don't see anything but just the ring of coral now what that means is that there used to be an island there like a volcanic island the hot spot volcano or something but because of the sea level went up the corals could keep up with the sea level so now all you see is just the ring of coral but if you go down right there there is always land there so now I'm going to show you a couple of pictures which are strictly about this. So this is the, the fringing reef. See how the coral reefs are growing right next to the land. So you can just walk to snorkel basically. I mean walk in the water to snorkel. Uh, this here is the barrier reef, like the great barrier reef. Um, the Bahamas have barrier reef. The Belize has barrier reef. But the most important and most diverse most beautiful reef is the great barrier reef of australia this is this picture great barrier reef uh this is my dream place i haven't been but one of these days i hope i will be able to and the last one is the atoll so here you don't see the land you just see the ring of corals but you know that underneath there is land and the coral started to grow right there this here shows you a couple of really pretty atolls so this is the type of reefs and now we are at the deeper water sediment so we're going to talk about uh, what happens after the shelf edge and uh, as you can see this here is the the, sh the continental shelf here is the shelf edge and then the continental slope the rise and the bishop plain um, so we have the, the sediment from the continent in this area and a lot of the times actually it comes down and deposits right here and uh, also we have this so-called biogenic oos which is all the planktonic uh, living things when they die they actually settle down here and we also have the pelagic red clay most, most likely brought from land which settles down right here and we also have the so-called altigenic sediment which is actually clay forming right there on the ocean so it's a it's a deep floor uh clay sediment which is forming right there so in the deep water we have the biogenic oos we have the pelagic red clay which is coming uh by by the wind red dirt from the continent and we have the altigenic sediment which is forming right in place there so we're going to talk about these areas now starting with the continental slope and uh the continental slope always uh, almost all the time sites of turbidity currents like if there is an earthquake and the sediment being shaken up on the continental shelf it actually will be bring 
uh, will be brought down right into uh, into the deeper water through the continental uh, slope and the continental rise. Um, the the currents usually come ra rapidly down, so it will actually make the very typical graded beds when it settles down. And the continental rise is going to be the place where actually the turbidite, turbi, the end result of the uh, turbidity currents are going to settle down. So this is where you find the so-called turbidites, which is the, the sediment brought down by the turbidity currents. And these, uh, the turbidites usually are graded bedding. They have relatively poorly sorted sand and, and grains. You know, like in an area where normally only fine grained sediment will be settling down. So when you look at these sediments and you see these uh, coarse grained layers in it, in the deep water sediment, you know that something has happened, like either a major storm or, or probably an earthquake. So it always helps us to understand what has happened in that area. So it's very important. The distribution of the sediments in the deep ocean will also reflect the, the latitude, uh, the distance from the continent, and also the carbonate uh, compensation depth. That's what we call CCD, carbonate compensation depth, CCD, carbonate compensation depth. It's, it's important to understand this. The carbonate con compensation depth is de depend on the CO2 and its solubility in the ocean water because as soon as the CO2 uh, as soon as the CO2 dissolves, calcium carbonate will not be able to, to uh, deposit. So below that calcium compensation depth, there will not be calcium carbonate deposit forming. It can only be above it. And actually, very close to the CCD, it's going to be the so-called calcareous ores, uh, which is mostly from the pelagic... Um, Said, you know, the, the, so the pelagic oases are forming from, from the planktons. Uh, a lot of the pelagic oase is from the planktons, which are secreting calcium carbonate skeletons. But they will be right around the, the CCD, the, the calcium carbonate um, compensation depth. Uh, below that, it's going to be the silice, silice, the silicate uh, deposition, which are coming possibly from the planktons, which are um, secreting SiO2 uh, skeleton. So that those will be depositing below the calcium compensation depth. And also the, the clays will deposit deep down below the CCD. The rate, rate of the sedimentation is dependent on the type of sediment in the, in the deep sea, but usually it's very, 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 very slow. So you don't have that much of this sediment. And this slide just shows you all this. So here is the CCD. Below the CCD is uh, the red clay which is forming. And above the CCD, right exactly the, the calcium containing uh, OOs, Below is the silica containing OOs, and this is the spreading center. That's where the magma is coming. So that just shows you this, this uh, thing. And the very last two uh, slide is talking about how do we interpret the rocks and how are we going to be able to put together the, the historical geology. And uh, this is the, the importance of the environmental significance. We can tell the geometry, uh, the three-dimensional shape of the rocks, the lithology, uh, the detrital grain size, like the, the pieces of rocks, how big they are, which is, relates to the energy level, um, the carbonate sedimentary facies with characteristic grain types. Remember, the grain size shows the energy level. The fossils... We have um, macro fossils, which are the rock builders, like the reef. Uh, we have macro and micro fossils, which indicators of the environment. 
and we have the trace fossils which is very important also those are sign of specific environments and then also we use the sedimentary structures as we just learned you know the, the ripple marks cross beds trace fossils we just talked about the mud cracks the graded bedding and uh, the parallel currents uh, from the ripple marks and uh, other sedimentary structures, we also can get information about parallel currents. So these are all very, very important in building up historical geology because too bad, but we cannot go back in time and we cannot figure out what has happened exactly. So we just can only read these things we just learned about to be able to build up the earth history. So this is the end of this chapter. And I will see you in the next chapter. Bye for now.